Good morning, everyone. I hope you are fine. In our lecture today, we will know the plot of Wuthering Heights, a novel by Emily Pronti. This lecture of Wuthering Heights by Emily Pronti tackles two important points. Number one, Pretax plus structure, which is divided into five phases. The first phase is called the beginning or exposition. The second phase is called rising action. And it also includes the conflicts and complications. The third phase is called climax. Also, it is called the crisis and turning point. The fourth phase is called falling action, and the last phase is called the end or denouement. The second point, however, deals with the structure of chapters in Wuthering Heights. And the structure of chapters is divided into three parts. The first part is called prologue. The second part includes the history of the family. And the last part is called epilogue. Well, at first we should know what is a plot. It is a literary term refers to the arrangement of sequence of events in any literary work. So there is beginning, development, a climate, and a conclusion. However, this is not always the same in every literary work. Also, usually there is main plot and sub plots in the majority of literary works, but not in all works. On his part, Britag divided the plots into five main divisions, and he called them plot structure. The first division is called exposition or the beginning. The second is called rising action and including conflict and complications. The third is called the climax, crisis or turning point. The fourth is called the falling action and the fifth is called the end or denouement. Now, we will define each phase with an example. So, firstly, what is an exposition? Actually, the beginning contains the exposition or the setting forth of information about earlier events, the identity of the characters, and the present situation. For example, Let's presume that we have the exposition or the beginning will be the crime scene. We have the victim, murderer, and a witness. And we can suppose that the murderer is masked. However, after having small struggle with the witness, the witness can uncover his mask and see his face. The murderer, the murderer then will flee from the witness. So here we have information about 
earlier event. We have information about the present situation with the crime scene that let us know and gauge that the play will be about this crime scene. So about investigating the identity of the murderer. Okay. Also, we have the identities of the main characters that are the murderer and the witness. And also, the victim. After this exposition, the rising action includes both conflict and complication. So, it is the second phase in Retag's five-phase structure, and it refers to another aspect of the beginning, which is a point of attack, which is the moment at which the main story starts as a potential conflict is identified. So, the rising action, it is another point or another aspect of the beginning. It is a continuation, okay, of the beginning. Here, the rising action will include the conflict. So, what is the conflict here? The conflict will be, what? The investigation. Now, we have an investigator. So, he wants to know the identity of the murderer, and he wants to get clues for this. One of the clues could be the witness. Let's suppose that in the crime scene, the investigation process finds that there was another person in the crime scene in addition to the victim and to the murderer. At this point, the investigator will know that there is a witness. So, the conflict here is a major literary element that involves a circle between two opposing forces, usually a protagonist and an antagonist. Without a conflict, there would be no story. The conflict is the most important part. Conflict here, we have protagonist and antagonist. The protagonist will be the investigator and the witness. The antagonist will be the murderer. Okay. Complications. The process of finding the witness in order to find the murderer will be co the complications here in our story. So, the middle is made up of a series of complications. A complication is a new element which changes the direction of the action. It leads to the discovery of a new information. So, in the complication, uh, let's say the uh, investigator uh, was searching for clues. So, while he is searching for clues, he finds out that... There is a witness, and he also may find clues for this witness. And finding the witness means finding the murderer. After finding the witness, you will reach to the climax. Why? Because, as I've told you, finding the witness means we can find the murderer. So, what is a climax? The climax can be called also crisis or the turning point. Series of complications culminate in crisis and climax 
It refers to the third phase in Vritak's five-phase structure, which occupies the middle of the story. So it is the point of a climax, or is the turning point of the story, where the main character makes the single big decision that defines the outcome of the story. In our case, the investigator uncover the identity of the murderer by the help of the witness. Now, moving on. After knowing the identity of the murderer, we have following action. So the part of a literary plot that occurs after the climax has been reached and the conflict has been resolved is called falling action. So falling action is the fourth phase in Vritak's five phase structure. It is the phase where the loose ends are being tied up. However, it is often the time of greatest overall tension. Uh, so in our case, we have tension, sure, because we have uh, an investigator and we have a police. They are trying to uh, trace the uh, murderer. The murderer will try to confuse them, will try to betray them, will try to escape from them. Now, the last phase is the end or denouement. In this phase, all mystery is solved and all patterns of events accomplish artistic or emotional effect so here issues are unraveled untied and resolved in our story here the mystery will be solved when both the investigator and the police arrest the murderer. Okay. After defining the phases of plus structure with examples, now we will know about them in Wuthering Heights. So, to start with, what is the exposition in Wuthering Heights? What does it tell us? Actually, in Wuthering Heights, the exposition includes number one the arrival of Lockwood at Thrush Grass Grange and number two it gives us an introduction to the world of the novel and to the complex relationships among the characters as well as to the peculiar style of narration through which the story will be told. Now after giving an introduction to the setting, main characters, and present situation in Wuthering Heights, the rising action that includes the conflicts and complications starts. Actually, it starts with Nelly, who begins her narration. Also, it includes Heathcliff's arrival at Wuthering Heights, Henley's abusive treatment of Heathcliff, and Catherine's first visit to Thrushgrass Grange, all of which set the major conflicts in motion. In addition to the big event in the novel, when Heathcliff hears Cathy say, it would degrade her to marry him. As the conversation between Nellie and Kathy, which he secretly overhears, it drives him to run away and pursue his vengeance. So, the major conflicts and complications in Wuthering Heights are actually come from Heathcliff's great natural abilities, strength of character, and love for Catherine Enshaw. Because all these characteristics enable him to raise himself from humble beginnings 
to the status of a wealthy gentleman. But his need to revenge himself for Hendley's abuse and Catherine's betrayal leads him into a twisted life of cruelty and hatred. On the other side, Catherine is torn between her love for Heathcliff and her desire to be a gentlewoman, and her decision to marry the gentle Edgar Linton drags almost all of the novel's characters into conflict with Heathcliff. So, as you see, complications and conflicts came from Heathcliff's desire to revenge because of Henley's mistreatment and Catherine's betrayal. So the major conflicts in Wuthering Heights are all are all shaped around Heathcliff's desire to revenge. Moving on, as we have just said, that Heathcliff's desire to revenge puts the whole world in Wuthering Heights in a direct conflict with him. And this conflict eventually leads to the climax, that is to say, the crisis or the turning point in Wuthering Heights. So what is the climax in Wuthering Heights? The climax in Wuthering Heights is represented by Catherine's death, which is actually the culmination of the conflict between herself and Heathcliff, and removes any possibility that their conflict could be resolved positively. After Catherine's death, Heathcliff merely extends and deepens his drives toward revenge and cruelty. On the other side, Heathcliff's cruelty that has been extended because of Catherine's death shapes the following action, that is to say, the tension in Wuthering Heights. Heathcliff destroys Isabella and drives her away. He takes possession of young Linton, forces Catherine and Linton to marry. Also, he inherits Thrushgrass Grain. However, accomplishing his revenge, Heathcliff gets everything that he wanted. Thereby, the tension in the novel is solved. So, we reached to the end of the novel, or the moment. So, in the end, Heathcliff loses interest in the whole project and dies. That is to say, his revenge does not make him happy. He dies. On the other hand, Harriton and young Catherine are to be engaged to be married, promising an end to the cycle of revenge. By the death of Heathcliff, a happy ending is shaped at the end of the novel. So that was the plot of Wuthering Heights that traces the plus structure of Britannia. Moreover, Wuthering Heights has another special structure according to chapters. So it can be divided into three 
parts. The first part is represented by prologue. It includes the chapters from 1 to 3. So what is a prologue? Actually, prologue is an opening to a story that establishes the context and gives background details, often some aerial story that ties into the main one, and other miscellaneous information. Actually, a prologue is nothing but an exposition or the beginning in Britag's five phase structure of the plot. The second part is represented by the history of the family and includes the chapters from 4 to 31. It is the huge part of the story. It includes the rising action, the climax, and the falling action, according to Britag's five-phase plot structure. The last part is called Epilogue, and it includes the chapters from 32 to 34. So what is an epilogue? An epilogue is a piece of writing at the end of a work of literature, usually used to bring closure to the work. So it is nothing but the end or denouement and retags by phase plus structure. That was the end of our lecture today. For further reading, you can refer to these resources. Next lecture, I will start with the summary and analysis of the first chapter in Wuthering Heights. Thank you very much for your time and good luck.